Welcome to Andy's Garage, I'm Andy Phillips. Today I'm going to show you how to rebuild the EGR solenoid on your vehicle. So let's get started. Now before we get started, I just wanted to give a little overview of the EGR system and, and what it does. Uh, basically, EGR stands for Exhaust Gas Recirculation System. And basically what the purpose of this is, is any exhaust gases that exit the engine, they get captured and basically recycled through the intake manifold so they can be reburned. Now the EGR system is made up of a few components. You have the EGR solenoid, you have the EGR valve, and you have the EGR tube. Now the solenoid is pretty much what controls that whole system. It works with your, your vehicle's computer system in order to process things properly. If you have an EGR solenoid that's failing, a lot of the symptoms could include um, performance issues. Um, it could also, your check engine light could come on, which would cause you to obviously fail your emissions test, and other performance issues as well. Now, depending on what kind of car you have or, or vehicle in general, if it's an older vehicle, you can't even buy the EGR solenoids anymore. So that's why I'm going to show you how to rebuild it so that way you're not caught in a bind where you can't even solve the problem if it goes bad. Now, for this particular video, I'm going to be working on an EGR solenoid that came out of an old Pontiac Fiero GT, which is one of the vehicles that you cannot purchase the EGR solenoid for. So let's go ahead and get started so I can show you how to do that, and that will also save you hundreds of dollars. Here's a close-up of the solenoid that we're going to be working on for this video. You can see this thing is definitely, definitely old. You got a lot of rust and corrosion, and uh, it just looks in bad shape. So I can only imagine what we're going to run into when we open this thing up. Now this right here is the filter right here on the front, so we're going to go ahead and remove that. So that way we can um, get this thing opened up. But you want to be careful um, for this particular solenoid. And I'm not sure, depending on the ones that you're working on, if they have the same. But you've got some of these thin little lines here. They're very delicate, so you got to be careful so you don't cause any more damage than is already within this thing. So let's go ahead and crack this thing open so we can start analyzing what we're getting into. Let's remove this little panel here off the bottom. already debris and junk falling out okay this looks pretty rough you can see that's all corroded in here the insulation is just pretty much breaking apart so we're gonna have to clean all that out that's for one of the one of the, uh, the lines here so that's already not looking good Pull this back so we can slide this out. I want to go gentle though, because if you look here, you have these two lines right here going underneath this uh, cap for the filter. You don't want to damage those. So I'm going to go ahead and, and slide this apart. We'll be right back. Okay, there's a couple of little clips right here. If you go ahead and rotate that, you can slide them out of the clips, and then that will then enable you to pull this out. But as I mentioned, just take your time. You don't want to damage those lines. So pull that up there. There we go. So now we can get in here and remove the filter. Coming around the edge here, you've got a couple of these little clips. One here, one there, and one there. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, pull them back so that way we can slide this out so we can get inside and see exactly what's, uh, what's going on in there. Okay, so you can see here, and it was actually four. So you have one here, two three and four they've all been lifted so now let's go ahead and gently pull this out you, you don't want to break anything but just, just, just slowly oops, pull that out be careful like what just happened here there's a, a little plate and a spring that came out so make sure you keep keep tabs on, on all this 
Next, I'm going to pull this out of the filter. You want to be careful here of these two lines going in. Depending on how old yours is, this could be very tight. So you just want to be patient and work it out slowly. You don't want to damage anything. So I'm just going to just pull it side to side. There we go. Kind of loosen the grip. Gently pull this out. And there you have it. Okay, so this is what we're going to be looking at. So we want to get into this piece here. Get into this piece here so we can look at, uh, at the coils and all in there and make sure that nothing is, is corroded. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is remove this housing here. And you'll notice there's a, a clip here and one here. So we're going to pull that out so that way we can access the, the, um, the magnetic uh, coil in there and, and inspect that. So I'm going to go ahead and pry this off and we'll be right back. Now the best way to free this up so you can pull it out from this casing here is um, to use right here, if you can see that. That is actually a, let's see if I, that's a, a T20, T20 bit, that's kind of like a star bit, so that'll go in here, and then from there, then you can rotate that, and you can push that through to then slide this out so we can get to the, uh, uh, to the magnetic wire that's, uh, that's wrapped around that coil. Well, there you have our problem with this solenoid. I mean, this thing is, we need to do some major, major cleaning on this thing. I was actually ex expecting to find one of these wires corroded off as well, but surprisingly, that's all intact. So let's get cleaning this up so we can restore that and then get this uh, solenoid back in shape. And you can see here the magnet wire has been uh, separated from the lead wire. So after we clean all this up, we're going to have to solder this back on there. What I'm going to use, I'm going to use this Rust-Oleum Rust Dissolver Jelly. And I'm going to apply that to the solenoid and all the components that have any kind of corrosion or rust on them. So that way that'll help remove it. So with this particular jelly, what you're going to want to do is you're just going to apply it with a brush, let it sit for about 15 to 20 minutes, that'll loosen everything up, and then we'll rinse it off. We'll see how it looks then. If need be, we'll do a second coat. Now, if you've got a lot of rust and corrosion on there, then you want to remove that first with maybe a, uh, just like a, um, like a um, copper brush or some kind of abrasive thing that can remove that. In this case, I'm not going to do it because I don't want to damage the components. So we're just going to apply the jelly directly and see what that'll do.
everything has been cleaned and rinsed you can see here it's pretty clean took a toothbrush and touched it up got most of it off everything else looks good and then we went ahead and cleaned all this off you can see here that's all been cleaned all the corrosion's gone so now what I'm gonna do I'm gonna go ahead and take a um, take a blow dryer and just dry this off real good and then we'll let it air dry overnight and then we will get down to soldering the uh, wire back together Getting ready to solder this, uh, this coil wire up here to where the magnetic wire is. You can see up in here, you can see a little bit of the remnant of where it broke off. So I may have to remove this cap to access it properly to solder it and then we'll go ahead and seal it with some, um, some liquid electrical tape just as a waterproof sealer to seal all that up. And then right here you'll notice where a little bit of the coil came apart there and I connected it just kind of twisted it together but I'm going to solder that as well and then we'll go ahead and wrap all that and we should be able to start putting it back together so we can test it I want to be gentle so you don't damage anything, but you can see this is got some bad corrosion up here. Probably got to work on that as well. You can see a lot of corrosion here on the, the lead wire, <clears throat> but this is where it needs to be connected right here. So we want to. Go ahead and connect to that wire. We're going to solder that to it after we clean all of this off. Went ahead and opened this up to see what kind of corrosion is in here. You can see there's a lot of it. So we're going to clean that. This lead right here was barely hanging on, snapped off, so I'm going to have to re-solder that on there as well. So I'm going to go ahead and clean off all this corrosion and then prepare to solder that on and then reconnect this uh, the wire here the wire here from this coil and then we should be able to start sealing it back up everything has been cleaned off with a rust remover you can see there's still a little bit left on there but we still have a good good bare contact there and um, on this side as well and if you look closely you can see the lead coming through let me clear that up you can see it connecting, so we know that one's good. So this one here that broke off goes to this side. You can see kind of some remnants of it on there. So what I'm going to do now is we're going to go ahead and prep that to solder that on. And then for this piece here that broke off on this end here, I'm just going to strip that wire to get a better connection, and then we'll solder that on, and that should get all of our contacts back on the way that they need to be. I went ahead and looped the, um, the wire there for the coil, so now we're going to apply some solder to it. Solder that in there. Now that we have all of the wires reconnected, next thing we're going to do is we're going to wrap this coil right here with some clear packing tape. So I'm going to cut a thin strip. We're just going to wrap it just to seal it. Take some clear packing tape and we're just going to put a thin wrapping over the coil. Hold everything in place and this is actually, it's a, a clear sealing tape or even packing tape will work as well. There we go. It's all sealed. So now we're ready to slide this back into the housing. Before we slide it in, I'm looking here, I'm going to go ahead and put some uh, liquid electrical tape as a sealer on these connections before we slide it in to keep any moisture and just keep everything tight. So let's go ahead and apply that.
This is what I'm going to be using here. It's fairly inexpensive. You can pick this up at any hardware store, Home Depot, Lowe's, uh, probably even Walmart would also have it. Went ahead and put this back on over the liquid um, electrical tape sealant that we put on. So now we're ready to slide this in. I'm going to go ahead and put this in. Before we seal the little clamps on the back, we need to put this back end here on here. Now remember to put it in the way it came out. You have right here this plate that goes in first. We'll lay that in. And then the next thing we're going to do is we need to add the spring. Here's the spring. You want to make sure that the spring it's lined up inside of this end here, and you want to make sure that this matches up well with the with the uh, these tabs. Everything has been put on. The clamps have been locked in place, holding that in. So now we're ready to put on the filter. So to do that, what you're going to want to do is you want to bend these wires back gently, because you don't want to cause a break in them. But just bend, just gently bring them back. And then as you can see there, you have that groove inside the filter. So we're just going to slide this in and just gently slide that in. Next thing you're going to do is go ahead and put the bracket back on it. You're going to have to expand it a little bit. It's very tight to slide it over. And then once that's done, and then we can now take this piece, clip it back underneath. There's some pins here where they clip through. So I'm going to go ahead and attach that. Before we screw this on, we're going to go ahead and inspect the pressure sensor as well. So you're going to go ahead and remove this little hose right here from the bottom of it. And then next thing you have this metal, metal clip here. You want to lift that with a flathead screwdriver. Just gently raise up on it right here where the, where the angle is. That way you're not bending it. Take that off. This is your pressure sensor. We're going to remove that. But you'll notice here that there's two, two points coming through here that clip in. So we're going to have to press them down to get it to slide all the way out so we can... Pull that out. Okay, that doesn't look good either. All corroded. That needs to be cleaned as well. Good thing we inspected that. You can see right there that connection's terrible. So we're going to go ahead and clean that off, make sure that's a good solid connection to the sensor. I went ahead and rinsed off all of the rust remover and you can see most of the corrosion is gone. This lead right here still looks a little bit, a little bit rough so I'm just going to take some light grit sandpaper and just lightly scrape that off so that way we can ensure that we have a good contact there. You can see it's already coming off. Well, this pretty much wraps up this video on how to rebuild and repair an EGR solenoid. Basically, the functionality of the EGR solenoid is going to be the same across all vehicles. The components are going to be similar as well. So even though this particular EGR solenoid may not be exactly like the one you're working on, the components and functionality are going to be pretty similar. If you have any questions, any comments, please send them in. I would love to hear from you. As always, I appreciate all of the support out there. So please like this video and subscribe to this channel. And I'll see you next time.